bonjour à tous. And that's the end of the French, I'm afraid. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to be speaking in English. Um, so I am Baru Douthwaite. I am a principal scientist working for the um, Aquatic Agricultural System um, CGI research program, and I also work for World Fish. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about some uh, methodological development around measuring impact in complex systems. But before I get on to that, I will spend a little bit of time talking about uh, my program um, and how we expect our research to achieve impact because this determines the, the characteristics and the need for, the, for methodological development. So, I'll just use the... Okay, so the Aquatic Agricultural Systems Program, um, we are, our goal is to help contribute to a reduction in rural poverty. That's our goal. We work in five hubs um, in Africa, Asia, and in the South Pacific. We work in Zambia, in the Barotse floodplain. We work in Bangladesh, in the South Bangladesh polder zone. We work in uh, Cambodia, in the Ton in the in the Philippines, and in the Solomon Islands, in the Coral Triangle, in, working on essentially coastal, coastal fisheries. So our, our hubs, are, we choose them um, first and foremost based on the importance of aquatic agricultural systems to livelihoods. So as I said, our goal is to try and to lever, is, is to reduce, con contribute to reduction of poverty. Our lever, what we do, is research. So um, we see research as a lever for change for the poor. That's how we see ourselves making a difference. And we see ourselves making a difference through two pathways, th two scaling pathways. The first um, is familiar, is that research develops new technology. And then the second, which I will argue is our main pathway, is that research builds capacity to innovate and change. And this is what I'm going to be talking about in, um, in particular this afternoon and the methodological challenges for impact evaluation in this area. Okay, so let's talk about pathway one, the familiar pathway. Um, I was told there was a, a pointer. Okay. Um, okay. I'll try. I'll 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 try with that. So, um, pathway pathway one. This is the f familiar pathway. That this is that researchers. What we do is we develop technologies. We develop. Uh, outputs and it's the adoption of our outputs that delivers impact okay and this is the pathway the, the arrow there okay great thanks so this is this is the pathway that essentially gave us the green revolution okay so you you carry out research you develop a new crop variety and then it's widely widely adopted okay and it sees research as being sort of outside of, of the system we, we can be outside we can be sitting in, in our research labs solving problems and then providing those solutions and that has worked in certain areas in favorable production environments if you look at this slide th this makes that point the this is taken um, the two photos, screen captures from Google Earth, taken at the same height 
above the ground. Okay, so you can see in Thailand, in a, uh, somewhere near the airport. For, the, for those of you who have flown into uh, Bangkok Airport, this will look familiar. It's what you see uh, out of the window of the aeroplane. Okay, and it's set up for modern varieties. Okay, you can imagine that there's maybe one, two, maximum three rice varieties being grown there. The roads there to bring in the input, that the pesticide. There is um, this communication. Okay, and so research developing output solutions that works. The system works there. Now, the second photo is in one of our hubs in the aquatic agricultural system, and you'll see a much richer diversity there. Um, much more people have to adapt their systems to the environment rather than vice versa. And so this pathway one, to develop solutions as out, outsiders, doesn't work nearly as well. And it's rather like rolling this rock up the hill. It'll, you solve one problem, um, there will be others. Okay, so here, this brings us to pathway two. How can we use research to actually build the capacity to innovate? Because in these less favorable production environments, what's crucial is that people can find the solutions to their own problems. Um, and so that's the area that AAS is, is working in and, and working on. So this pathway two, research that builds capacity to innovate. It's exploring how research itself and the process of doing research can build capacity to innovate. Um, and it's normative, so we're, we're passionate about this. Um, and it starts with the believing in the principle or in the potential of people in these aquatic agricultural systems to find their own solutions. And it's the idea that uh, it's about unlocking a, a, a potential and using research as a lever to unlock that potential. So um, just to give an a analogy, you'll, you'll be familiar with this. Give a person a fish and you feed them for a day. Teach a person how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. This is similar. You, if you solve a person's problem, you can create dependency. You, you can actually, through a fixation on research output, you can make people dependent on the next project coming in, on outsiders to solve their problem. You can actually damage some of the infrastructure, the learning infrastructure that exists. If you help people solve their own problems, then you, then you empower them. So what does this actually look like in practice? Okay, um, sounds good, I think, theoretically. So in, in practice, um, let me use a, a network uh, uh, analogy to try and explain it. So um, in our hubs, we will find typically that you have um, groups working as silos in isolation. So this might be a ministry, um, this might be an uh, extension system, uh, the NGO, the, 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 the traditional authority. So what we do is through a, a rollout, a, a process of a, 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 um, developing a collaborative research program, we come in first and start to, to scope out and develop a and identify a, a compelling hub development challenge. Okay, something that people are motivated and are enthusiastic to work on because they see a potential in working on, on this area. Um, very importantly, this, this area of work should um, be of uh, importance and, and should build on community and smallholder vision. Then, through your participatory action research, through your collaborative research, uh, you, you start to support people in their inquiry in, into a research process to start to tackle the hub development challenge. Okay, so people start to work on things, and as a result, through the research process, you start to build links. 
and you start to bring in then other actors. So this, th these could be researchers from CIRAD, from somewhere else outside, outside the hub. Okay, and so you build and you start to weave this network, and then you can withdraw. And what you've left behind is a network which is much more linked up. In, in terms of innovation, ideas will flow in and across this much more easily than here. Through using research, you have built the capacity to innovate in this hub in, 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 in this way. Okay, so that's... I just wanted to give that as a kind of a, a scene setting because this sets for us then the evaluation challenge. How do we measure the impact of this pathway to? Okay. So let's just locate ourselves. Um, some of you will be familiar with this of depiction of um, the different sort of systems. So we can be in, in a complex system, things can be complicated, chaotic, or, or simple. We in AAS, and in particular with Pathway 2, are firmly in the complex. Pathway 1 is more in the complicated. And both um, complicated and simple, um, th those are called ordered systems, and most of M&E uh, metho methodologies, most of M&E has been developed to work in the ordered system space, not so much with complex, hence the need for methodological innovation. Knowing that we work in this complex space also provides some design criteria for our M&E. Um, we are not a part of the system. We are in the system. It's the same for M&E. M&E is not a part. M&E is part of what we do. It's the impact culture. Sorry, yeah. what is m &E? Ah, sorry. Uh, monitoring and evaluation. <laughs> um, yes, please interrupt me if I am uh, using um, acronyms. It is a, a, a fault of the CG, I'm afraid. Um, uh, the CG is another acronym. <laughs> uh, yeah, but let's not go there. Okay, um, so this sets our, our design criteria. Um, our monitoring and evaluation system it needs to support implementation learning and adaptive management in complex systems. Because if we don't implement and we don't learn, we're not going to have impact to measure at the end of the day anyway. All right? and then, um, it's got to um, the, the key words here um, you'll see are probe, sense, respond, and the word emergent. Um, so the m and &E system has to be able to identify and evaluate emergent and unexpected outcomes. And as already been mentioned, uh, we need to be able to show contribution and understand that we are contributing, we're, we're, we're working with others and how to acknowledge and value the, the effort of others, of the networks that we, we are part of. This is a, a schematic of the AES m and &E system. I'm not going to go to it in, in, in any detail, except to say that it has a foundation. You, we build it up over time. The, the basis is performance reporting, essentially dealing with your um, sort of annual accountability requirements. And the, the monitoring of, of, of outcomes, m and &E for learning, evaluation research, this is something which we stage. Um, it, you don't put, you don't build an M&E system in one day. What I'm going to be talking about now, it, and, and the methodological development that 
that we've been doing and that we're, we're quite excited about is something called outcome evidencing. Um, and it sits firmly in, the, in that space, um, part research, part monitoring of outcomes, and partly supporting learning. It's not the whole AAS m and &E system, but it's an important part of it. Okay, so uh, remembering what I just said, that our M&E needs to support uh, implementation, needs to support the intervening and learning in complex, in complex systems. And so it's this process, intervening and learning in complex systems, that outcome evidencing is seeking to, to foster. And starting again, so remember we're in the complex setting, the words probe, sense, respond. That's, that's how we work. So we start off by, um, we, we probe by just implementing our initiatives. We are like anyone else, we plan initiatives, we have theories of change, we have project documents, uh, we have activity reports. We plan and start to implement. As we implement though, we're aware that things will start to emerge, things will start to happen. Um, we'll pick up on a particular, a mechanism will, will click in and we want to be aware of those emergent changes. So we need to be able to sense emergent change. We need to make sense of it and then we need to decide, to, we need to respond to either amplify what's starting to happen um, or in some cases dampen it off depending who is benefiting. Not all change is good. And then having, having done that, we then need to, uh, our second part of responding is to learn and, and modify. To essentially, we've had this experience, we reflect on it, we modify our assumptions, our, our working principles, and we put that into practice. And so, we take that back in to the planning process. Okay, so this is, this is real-time evaluation designed to feed into the, the, our, our planning. So we can be adaptive, we can be nimble in the complex systems in which we're working. So now I'm going to go through these steps in some detail um, because it's actually, with this stuff, yeah, in theory, it looks fine. The devil is in the detail. Getting it to work is in, is, is, is in this detail. So we begin by, um, as part of our planning, straight off starting to work to develop forward-looking theories of change. Okay, so this, and, and we tend to do this in a workshop. Um, a theory of change, let me just define it, is a fancy term for essentially laying out how you, what, how you expect what you do is going to make a difference. For, that's forward-looking. Or, if things have already happened, how you think you contributed to that change. Okay? So, we start at the beginning with our planning to develop these theories of change. And we're doing it for a number of reasons. Because getting people together and developing a common theory of change builds ownership and enthusiasm. Um, and it, it gives us a basis to begin. We've learned not to over-detail these forward-looking theories of change. They need to be good enough to get you going. And we will refine and detail them later through, through reflection. So we've got started. We're implementing. We're doing participatory action research. We're engaging. Things are starting to happen. So we need to then go and prospect for early outcomes um, to which our interventions have contributed. Then we cluster those outcomes. We, okay, I've taken 20 minutes. I'll um, move on. Um, 
so these are the steps with cluster outcomes, identify emerging trajectories of change. These are the steps which I will go through now. It's a participatory process. Um, and so this is, this is outcome evidencing and this is the method which we're, we're, we're in the process now of developing. So we, the way we prospect for, for outcomes is, is quite simple. We just get people to fill out a simple t um, format to describe something that's changed, which they think the program has, has contributed to. We then, we then cluster those outcomes. So here, um, this was in CAM, uh, the Tonlis app, and you can see uh, that a number of outcomes were identified and they've been clustered together under capacity development. Having clustered those outcomes, we then, as a group, start to identify what we think are emerging trajectories of change. All right? So, because what you find is when you look at a, a lot of different outcomes, they're not separate from each other. They're actually starting to tell you something about something more ha starting to happen, your emerging trajectory of, 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 of change. So, this was done in, in Bangladesh, and... From that, we identified four emergent, emerging, potentially emerging trajectories of change around the capacity to do research, building self-confidence and leadership, um, women and men collaborating in research, and influencing partners. So having identified those potential trajectories, the next step is for and this is all done in a workshop with the people who are involved in the change in the field, starting to then draw a theory of change to link that cluster together. Okay, so what caused what? And you'll see the sort of the yellow diamond cards. Those are the, where they thought the program had contributed. Okay, so you, we're developing a theory of change and we're identifying then the, the contribution points. Then the next step is to say, okay, where's the evidence? Who do we go and talk to to um, check that this is actually the case? And then um, a external, someone who is external then goes with that evidencing plan and comes up with a outcome evidencing report. Okay, so basically takes the output from that workshop, the evidencing plan, goes off, checks out the story, writes the report. Okay, and this happens, um, this is, we're building this to happen, this cycle will happen every year. Okay, and th th this is how it works. So, prospecting for outcomes, um, you then have this workshop where you cluster the outcomes, you develop the theory of change, then that process, so the same people are then going to go into planning their initiatives, all right? So having been through that discussion, the people then take that straight in and some immediate implications straight into initiative planning. The, the evaluator goes off and evidences the theory of change. And then we have, okay, so here, all right, this is where the initiatives decide, you immediately decide whether to amplify or dampen what's starting to come out. You, the evaluator goes off, um, evidences the theory of change, the reports available here, that feeds into annual reflection and learning where the group then revise the forward-looking initiative theory of change. Then that feeds back into, the, into this side. So we are building forward-looking and revising forward-looking theories of change with initiatives here while we start to map out and evidence emerging trajectories of change and their respective theories of change here. Um, I've got, have I, I've, it's, uh, what's 
it's happened. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, so that's essentially outcome evidencing. It's work in progress. Um, it's a methodological arrangement. It's built on a number of. Um, methods and approaches, outcome harvesting, most significant change, contribution analysis and, and theory-based evaluation, case study methodology, and participatory impact pathways analysis. Um, what we're working on now is on meta-evaluation. So the idea is that we will, we're going to be doing this every year. Okay, and so a lot of the outcomes next year will actually be confirming and adding detail to the trajectories of change which we've been identifying this year. So over three, four years, we'll start to build a really good evidence, we expect to build a really good evidence base of these emerging trajectories of change which we're contributing to, together with some very detailed analysis about how exactly we are contributing. Then we would pull those together three, maybe three, five years into a meta-evaluation, which would then seek to um, look at that, those, that side of the story versus what's actually measuring, what change we're measuring in the field through revisiting benchmarks and, and baselines. Um, more thought is needed on that. So finally, in conclusion, um, I think you know, the point I've been trying to make is that in uh, m and &E needs to support learning and adaptive management when working in complex systems. It must be part of what we do, not something apart from it. This is not something that comes in every five years and externally evaluates you. Um, most monitoring and evaluation is developed uh, most methods are developed assuming ordered systems. For instance, um, the you know, internal rate of return and sort of e a lot of the economic impact assessment approaches. Hence, we, we feel the need for this methodological innovation. We think this approach does show some promise, although it's early days. Um, it, it, it is emerging as a foundation stone of our m and &E system and happy to share this learning with those of you who are also <laughs> grappling with how to do evaluation in complex systems, dealing with some of these issues around um, contribution, um, accountability, and learning. So thank you very much. <laughs>